Welcome back to Dr. Gina Primetime. Now, whether we like it or not, the impeachment trial is coming to the Senate, and whether it's constitutional or not, it's likely going to happen. So will the Republicans in the Senate stick together and stand up to reject this ridiculous impeachment sham number two? Let's ask Senator Rand Paul. Senator, good to see you. Great to have you. I believe this is your maiden voyage on my new show. Um, Senator, the obvious question first, how can you hold an impeachment trial for someone who's no longer in office? Well, I don't think it is constitutional. The Constitution is pretty plain on this. It says that you can impeach someone to remove them from office and that if you want to disqualify them from office, it's impeachment and disqualification. And Alan Dershowitz wrote about this the other day. He says it's not impeachment or disqualification, it's impeachment and disqualification. But you can't impeach somebody from office who's already left. And even the Democrats are acknowledging this. Even the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court really is acknowledging this because the Chief Justice says, well, guess what? I'm not coming over because an impeachment is for the president and Trump is no longer the president. So it's really a bizarre notion that they think that the American public are gonna accept this as legitimate when the guy in charge of it's gonna be a partisan Democrat who already voted for impeachment once. Yeah, exactly. Will there be an opportunity, you know, sometimes things that we don't like, court cases, for example, that we think are stupid, uh, still provide an opportunity for us to lay out facts that we wouldn't otherwise get to lay out before the American public. And so they backfire in some situations. Will there be an opportunity to lay out the election irregularities in the Senate trial? And will the mainstream media be able to continue to ignore all the facts that you so eloquently pointed out. Uh, we, we showed most of that interview, actually, with George Stephanopoulos, uh, that interview that you did um, in, in our first block, but we'll, we'll show more of it. But I just I want to know if we'll be able to put some of those facts out before the people, because the media has done a, a very good job of actually covering most of what you illuminated up completely. The, the interesting thing about an impeachment and the sort of unfortunate thing is, at least from the senator's point of view, is we don't really get to talk. And uh, there's not much argumentation or debate from senators. The president's lawyers will get to make a case and the president and his lawyers will make uh, the decision on what that case is. I continue to say and will continue to say that yes, there was fraud in the election. Whether or not it affected the election, we would only know if we investigated it. But since they have done everything possible to block an investigation, they say, oh, well, the courts have heard this. Well, the courts didn't hear this. Almost every one of the court cases were dismissed on standing, which is a procedural right. you know, way of the court saying, we don't really want to hear this. And so they dismiss these things. But the battle is not over. And this is what I tell our people, because I know people are very frustrated. I talk to people at home, all the hardcore people that worked so hard for the president. They're like, I'm giving up. I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything. I'm getting out of politics because, you know, nobody would defend the president. But I continue to defend the president, continue to defend the electoral integrity. And the way I'm going to do it is I plan on going to 35 state legislatures, the ones controlled by Republicans, and I plan on getting legislation introduced that will restore confidence. So number one, the legislation should forbid anybody from mailing or accessing applications to vote other than the individual voter. So you should have to put your own identifying information in to get an application to vote. We shouldn't have moveon.org soliciting you, but we also should not have the government of Georgia soliciting you to vote. That needs to be an individual voter function the way it's always done. We need to purge the rolls routinely and mandatorily. In my state, we had a Democrat who was, she was the Secretary of State for eight years. The federal government, through court order, told her she had to purge the rolls. She never did for eight years. We finally elected a Republican, and last year we were fortunate that Republican Secretary of State actually went through and started purging the rolls of illegal voters. So there's a lot of things we can do, but since the elections are run at the state level, we need to do it at the state legislative level. So what I tell people is, don't give up on politics. Become more active at the state legislative right. level if you want to fix the elections. And I think a lot of people have speculated that the real motive here is to stop the president from running again, to humiliate him, to teach a lesson to people to sort of never, uh, you know, engage in these kinds of things again. Um, but, you know, here's my, here's my thought. Um, as you mentioned, we talk to people every day who are, you know, 
sad and they're down and they're maybe going to step out. They, they believe their vote doesn't count. They believe their voice doesn't count. Even for those who do think their voice still counts, they're afraid their job's going to be affected. They're going to get canceled. They may have investigators show up at their front door. People are getting arrested. Citizens, activists, um, you know, uh, innocent people all the time. They get beat up like you did uh, just for being at home, uh, you know. And so it is it's a hard thing to be a Trump supporter. People say it every single day. Um, so my question for you, Senator, because I want to talk to not the Trump campaign workers, um, you know, not even the senators and the, and the congressmen, um, and not even the, the high-profile activists. I want to talk to the mom and pop who are watching this show right now who have been through this whole thing. And I want you to tell them what they can do to support your action in 35 states, because this is really important what you're doing. And I love this, and that's why I called our friend Sergio and said, I've got to get the senator on my show tonight, because there is a world out there who is hurting and discouraged right now. And I want you to talk to them and tell them what are their action steps to help you with this, Senator, and how can we be a part of this? The first thing you need to do is call up your state representative. State representative has a fairly small block of people that they represent. You can probably get their phone number. You can call them. Most state representatives, you can probably call at their house and talk to them. You call them up and you say, look, I'm concerned. I don't know that my vote's counting and I want the election to have more integrity. I want people to have to show an ID. I don't want people voting by mail. I want this to be a, a, an election that I can believe in the next time around and you say, I want election reforms. And even if you live in a Republican state, precisely if you live in a Republican state, you have a chance of fixing this, but they won't do it unless they get hundreds and hundreds of phone calls. So rather than give up on this, you know, get back involved and get involved at the local level. The other thing about it is, is most elections that are big and beyond us, either Congress, Senate, or the president, we think, oh, how could we ever influence that because it's so big? You can influence it, but it's harder. State rep race, if you and 20 people got together and said, we're gonna support so-and-so because this guy or this woman won't do election reform, you can win a state rep seat. State rep seats are winnable at the local level with local activism. So I'd say by all means do it. But I would also say don't give up. And I'll give you an example from my family. In 1976, my dad lost an election by 200 votes out of 200,000. But interestingly, we found precincts where people voted, sometimes 13 people voted from one house. They voted from vacant lots. They voted from P.O. boxes. We found an entire precinct in the same handwriting, 100% turnout where he got zero votes. So irregularities, fraud, these kind of things have happened. We came back the next time and he won by about 500 or 1,000 votes, but we got poll watchers in every precinct. We went to the precincts where Republicans normally don't get votes, and we sat down at the table, and they sat there and watched them count the votes so they couldn't count the votes with just the Democrats around. And guess what? You can win, but you have to do this. And uh, I, I think it's terrible what happened the last election, but we can't give up. We just have to keep fighting. Yeah, absolutely. And to know the facts, like you said in that interview that we played in the first segment, to know the facts of what happened in this election and to be able to repeat them calmly as you did in that interview with Mr. Stephanopoulos. Um, and I think to be able to point to standing as, as the reason that all of those cases were thrown out, that is so, so important to understand that there's a difference between losing a case and for it to be thrown out because of standing, so critical. And also to be able to point to one fact that you pointed to, Senator, that I think was so critical, um, and that is that what Mr. Stephanopoulos did in that interview was to step in as your opponent, rather than to have someone on that show with you to take you on. He stood there, called you a liar, and said, uh, you know, and acted as your opponent. Um, rather than letting there be a media debate with him as a moderator. That's how media has changed. Phenomenal job, Senator. I don't usually gush all over my guests like this, but I really just thought that was exceptional, and I wish our other senators and elected, elected officials would stand the way you did in that particular interview and would be taking action that would prevent um, election foul-ups uh, in the future so that people could feel confident in their votes. That's all we're asking for, free and fair elections. Thank you for fighting for them. Thank you. All right, coming up, COVID is disappearing now that Biden has entered the Oval Office. It's quite miraculous, and we're going to tell you more about it up next. More Dr. Gina Primetime coming up. Stick around. Uh.